Hello everyone, back to you in today's second video. So you're going to have a look at the ECMDF and Metro France seasonal models to see what they're showing uh, for the next few months. We're going to go through the winter and into the spring of uh, 2019 with this update. Talking of winter, we have released the uh, 12th and penultimate uh, winter 2018-19 update. It's on the homepage right now. And, uh, well, probably later on, but very late on today, I'm hoping to get that video onto Winter Updates page with a written uh, summary that goes through it as well. It may not be until tomorrow, but I'm able to do that because I've got a live chat coming up with Quantum uh, between 5 and 7 o'clock this evening. So if I can't get that uh, Winter Update of a written summary onto Winter Updates page, I've just run out of time. Uh, this evening, then uh, that video will be uh, put there tomorrow with the written uh, summary. Really busy day at Gazwell this today. And uh, also, of course, a Christmas update that will be coming up very, very shortly, um, just before the live chat, I would have thought. So it's a massively busy day. I'm uh, going to be uh, on oxygen, I think, by the end of the day. So um, just bear with me and I, I will get all of the updates uh, included for you um, today, as well as that live chat uh, with Quantum. If you want to hear myself and Quantum talking about the cold weather, the chance of snow, uh, then all you got to do is uh, find the video on the homepage. Um, and it's fully interactive. It's on Quantum's YouTube channel, but it's also going to be uh, placed on our Twitter and Facebook page. Uh, and you'll be able to ask questions and all of that kind of thing. And we'll do our best to answer uh, everybody's questions during the course of the chat. So that's going to be really interesting and really exciting from 5 until 7 o'clock uh, today. But as I say, this second video is having a look at the long-range e 7 f and Metro France seasonal models. So, with so much going on today, I think better get on with it. We're going to start off with mean sea level pressure anomalies uh, from Metro France. And this is covering uh, the period from uh, December through to January, through to February. So this is the mean sea level pressure and knowledge from Metro France for the winter of 2018 uh, 19. And this is what it's showing. It's showing an area of above average pressure, high pressure then uh, around Greenland and also going down into the North Atlantic with low pressure to the south. And so that could be pulling in the winds from an east or northeasterly direction. So it could be pretty cool cold that a cold winter i think is being forecast from metro france at least a cold synoptic pattern uh type winter i expect when we have a look at temperature numbers in a moment they won't be uh particularly cold because they never are with these long-range models but certainly the pattern would be one that you would think is conducive to a colder than average winter with high pressure blocking around greenland and low pressure to the south of the uk would be pulling in winds from an east or northeast direction and so therefore that you would suspect would be a cold uh, cold winter the high pressure signal actually can uh, strengthen, continues to strengthen as we go into the late winter. So this is going to take us from January uh, through February to March. It's going through the late winter and into the early spring. And that area of high pressure around Greenland down into North Atlantic is strengthening. The low pressure to our southeast is more centred across central parts of Europe. So again, I can't see any reason why that shouldn't be particularly cold. Notice there's also area of high pressure back to Western Russia ridging into Scandinavia. To be honest, that does look to me like you would expect a cold, uh, a cold um, sort of late winter there uh, with the wind again coming in from an easterly type direction. By the way, these charts are at the Copernicus website. You can find the link to the Copernicus website on the links page at Gazo. It's very difficult to navigate this website now, unfortunately, but uh, the link is provided if you would like to see uh, these charts for yourself. Uh, this is um, February, March, April, so it's going to the end of winter and into, uh, well into the spring, and it still looks pretty blocked. High pressure is still out to the west and the northwest of the country. Possibly a little bit more of an Atlantic influence, you would say, uh, with that, but it's hardly a warm uh, looking uh, pattern, but perhaps a little bit, a uh, little bit less cold, I suppose, as we're going deeper in towards the spring. But those are very blocked looking charts that we've got there. And it does look to me as though Metro France would be forecasting a cold and average winter. Now, I said that temperature anomaly for Metro France probably wouldn't be going for a cold and average winter, but um, actually, the temperature anomaly there is forecast now uh, from Metro France to be below average this winter. 
So here's a seasonal model that is actually going for a cold of an average winter for much of the UK. Uh, also a little bit cold of an average Torrey. So Denmark forecasts have a colder than an average winter. And down around the Bay of Biscay also cold and average there. There's a big white area, you'll notice, much of Scandinavia, much of Eastern and Central Europe and down towards France. Big white area uh, where there lo looks like there's not much going on. It's uh, no signal. Based on the um, mean sea level pressure on me, you would expect most of this area, I would have thought you would expect most of this area to be colder than average, really. So a cold winter for much of um, northern Europe, uh, to be honest. Down in Mediterranean, it looks like a milder uh, winter going through there. Now, let's go through to the late winter period. So, this again takes us through to uh, January, February, March. And again, we see similar uh, story is maintained. Cold and average temperature anomalies very close to the UK. Um, and also going into Denmark, cold and average there. Down to Bay of cold and average. Again, this big white area that we have here that just has no signal. It's average or no signal. Uh, again, you know, I would suspect much of that area would again be coming out colder than average, but it must have the core of the cold, or the strongest cold anomaly is actually close to the UK and to Ireland for this uh, winter. And then we're moving through to the final trimonthly period, which is February, March, April, and it still hints at being a bit colder than average around the UK, even then. Uh, and again, notice this white area where, again, we've got no signal. It's milder down through the Mediterranean. But this looks like a cold winter, most definitely, for much of Northern Europe. OK, it's placing the cold anomalies close to the UK and Ireland and Denmark. But to be honest, it looks like a cold winter for much of Northern Europe, Central Europe, and also the UK and Ireland will be included in that um, with, uh, with this model, with Metro France. Precipitation anomalies are looking like this for the winter of 2018-19. Uh, so it's going for drier than average precipitation anomalies to the north of the UK. Uh, otherwise, most places, um, that's where the high pressure is going to be sitting, of course. You'll have all the high pressure uh, up here and going up to there. Otherwise, again, there's not much uh, going on in terms of a precipitation anomaly. I suspect many of these central and northern areas will probably be um, a little bit unsettled because there is a trough there across uh, central parts of Europe, remember, uh, in terms of mesial pressure anomaly. But bear in mind, it's probably quite a cold air mass, so cold air holds less moisture than uh, warm air, mild air. So um, perhaps a, a mix of unsettled and settled conditions, and that's why it's coming out with a large area where there is no uh, particular signal. Let's go through to the next trimonthly period, and this one is going to take us to January, February, March. And again, very similar uh, uh, scenario, so not a great um, deal of uh, to go on, to be honest. Again, it looks dry an average up here. That's where we've got high pressure. And up there, we've got high pressure up there, high pressure somewhere around there. And there, you would have thought. Um, it looks a bit wet and average down through kind of southern Europe, perhaps, particularly around Italy. So when you get a lot of northern blocking up here, and again, up here, one of the things that you do tend to find is low pressure through the Med. So you uh, you tend to get it centred around Italy. Low pressure there, high pressure there. Of course, a squeeze of the isobars brings the wind in from an easterly direction. It can bring the wind in from an easterly direction between the blocking and the low through the Mediterranean. So that does kind of tie in with that. But very weak signals for precipitation going into late winter. And then we get through to the middle part of the spring. And again, we see dry of an average through here. Just moving down a little bit further into the central Atlantic. So that's what I'm talking about. Maybe by the time we get into the middle of the spring, we might decide to introduce a little bit more of an Atlantic flow, perhaps. So not as cold, um, but probably still quite chilly. Yeah, it's coming from the northwest. Again, the basic signal is drier up here and up here. And it looks a little bit more unsettled down there. But the signals of precipitation are very weak from Metro France. The main thing to focus on, I think, is mean sea level pressure, which is definitely going for a pattern that would be conducive to a colder and average winter. This is uh, ECMWFN. So, again, this is mean sea level pressure anomalies for uh, December, January, February, the winter of 2018-19 has an area of above average a pressure close to the UK and also going to the north. So a little bit different, not, not as much of a blocking signal, you'll notice, uh, for winter with 
the ECVF. We've got this this high pressure. We've got high pressure uh, around the UK and going towards Scandinavia. We've also got low pressure in the Atlantic, low pressure up here, low pressure up there. So it isn't anywhere near as blocked. It's nowhere near as cold a signal from the ECMDF this month in terms of its mean sea level pressure anomaly, as we have seen with this model in the past couple of months, and as we just saw from Metro France either. This one doesn't look as cold uh, for the winter. But as we go through to the late winter, actually, it starts to get a little bit more interesting because that area of high pressure then begins to move more towards the uh, west, northwest of the UK. This is the January, February, March. We start taking that high pressure up towards Greenland. And so, again, it's not a particularly cold signal, that, because we'll probably be bringing the air in something like that with a jet stream. But look what happens as we get through to the final tri-monthly period. Uh, this one taking us from February through to April. We do start to move that high pressure then to Iceland and to Greenland as well. The high pressure is going up there. Hints of a suddenly tracking jet stream with low pressure needing to move through here. And so, again, we could well start to pull in cold air from the east. So I think the east end of and we'll go on a month-by-month -month breakdown in a moment um, and see how this plays out month-by-month. Month. I think the ECM is now pushing the coldest uh, and most blocked weather for this winter back to the latter part of winter, to late winter, and the early winter perhaps suggests something a little bit milder from the ECM. So these are the temperature anomalies for December, January, February, and now going for a slightly milder than average winter uh, close to the uh, UK, you'll see there, above average temperature, not greatly, but slightly above average for parts of northern and uh, particularly eastern uh, Britain. Notice a very mild winter being signalled for Scandinavia and to our north. Then we've got all of this area that's white, again, no particular signal there, and then very mild conditions down in the south and the southeast of uh, Europe. Let's go through to January, February, March, and we see that it's beginning to cool down, so we're beginning to lose those milder than average or warmer than average temperature anomalies close to Scandinavia. They're reducing. The UK is going to no signal. Most of Europe is at uh, no signal as well. So after what looks like a fairly mild signal for northern Europe actually for the winter get through to the late winter and uh, we begin to start to see things turning cooler or colder and then we get through to the final trial that feels in February March April um, by then, the warmer than average or milder than average temperature anomalies have pushed off up to the very, very far northeast of Europe. Otherwise, most places are coming out, uh, coming out with average precipitation or no particular signal. So the ECMDF definitely has backed away from its uh, very cold and blocked wind signal that we saw a month or two ago. Although I think, I still think it's progressing things in a colder direction as we move through the winter. Precipitation uh, anomaly is looking like this with the ECMDF. So again, we see quite a dry signal here around northern parts of, uh, of the Atlantic and to the north of the UK. Otherwise, again, very, very weak signals, not a strong signal for this winter precipitation wise, except in the southeast of Europe from kind of like the Adriatic Ode to the Black Sea. It's a little bit above average for precipitation there, but otherwise, very, very close to average. No. Uh, particular signal. This is how things look as we get through to January, February, March, and the drier than average conditions are strengthening out to the northwest of us. So again, high pressure is likely to be through there. Otherwise, again, no particular signal except perhaps in the southeast of Europe, where it does look a lot uh, wetter down there. And then finally, for these charts at Copernicus, February, March, April, and it looks pretty dry again out to the northwestern part of the, the country. So again, just high pressure up there. Doesn't like it's turning a little bit more unsettled through central parts of Europe, above average precipitation, anomalies from France going through some parts of Germany and over towards the east of Europe. Still looks really quite wet indeed down in the southeast. But again, very, very weak signals uh, for precipitation from both of these models. The contrast is between the mean sea level pressure anomalies and also the temperature anomalies. ECM, definitely the milder of the two. Metro France, definitely going for a cold winter there 
Um, although I think the ECM does progress in a colder direction. And let's just confirm that now by going to the website weather.us. We can do a month by month breakdown uh, for the ECMDF long range model. So we start with mean sea level pressure anomalies. This is how November was forecast to be with a large ridge to our east. I think it's got that right. And uh, low pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic. And so that leaves us in this sort of no man's land of surly winds. Of course, we know now the, the ridge is strengthening to the east and taking over the pan. But I think for a mean anomaly for the month, that's probably going to be fairly accurate as well. And this was created at the end of October. Uh, so we go through to December. This is mean sea level pressure anomaly for December. And you can see low pressure being forecast to be out to the west of the UK. We do have some high pressure up over Scandinavia, but it's a very, very long way north. And so this looks like a relatively unsettled and probably quite mild uh, December that we're seeing there. Low pressures to our west, southwest. We're bringing in that um, Atlantic wind. Yes, there is some high pressure up there, but it's weak. Won't be enough to bring in an easterly wind. And so overall, this looks like for much of Western Europe, anyway, a relatively unsettled and mild month. That uh, takes us through to January. What we see in January is the high pressure really strengthening, uh, but not in a particularly cold position. The high pressure is kind of like through the UK, and it's going through to central parts of Europe. So that's just a very dry, after that unsettled and mild December, we go through to much drier uh, January. Um, probably quite cold, because high pressure in January is going to be pretty chilly. You're going to get frost and fog, but, I mean, it's not pulling down Siberian or Arctic air. The jet stream is actually probably going through uh, up there somewhere. That takes us through to February, and then we start to progress into a colder pattern for February. So definitely that idea is there, that as we're going along through the winter, we're getting into a more blocked and colder setup. The high pressure then begins to reach up towards Iceland, possibly going up towards Greenland. We'll confirm that in a moment. Low pressure is covering much of Europe, and of course, squeeze between the two is likely to bring in the wind from an east or northeast direction. So February of this month's ECM Definitely suggested to be the coldest and most wintry month of the winter. That takes us through to March and we maintain this wintry looking pattern again with high pressure out to the west. Not quite as far north, I don't think, with our high pressure. Again, we'll confirm all this in a moment when we look at the wider view of the North Atlantic. But um, high pressure is still out to west northwest of us, low pressure is still uh, running through there. So, again, it looks to me as though that would still be putting down pretty cold weather in from the east of the northeast in March. So, February, March, when we get hit by the coldest of the conditions with this, uh, with this ECMDF update. Uh, then we go through to uh, April, and we've got high pressure then across Scandinavia. Uh, and out to the north of the UK with low pressure out to our west. So a bit of battle going on there. The high pressure, of course, trying to bring in those winds from the east. But the low pressure in the Atlantic will be trying to bring in kind of like spring warmth, if you like, but also some spring rain. So that's one of those in between, in between type months. And then finally, we get through to May. And, uh, well, this looks like a nice May with a lot of high pressure across many parts of the country. That would be... Uh, quite a warm and dry signal for May. Uh, so let's have a look at the temperature anomaly that goes with those months very quickly. So again, November looking uh, a lot milder than average, not just for UK, but for most parts of uh, Europe. I think that could be fairly accurate. But of course, we've got colder weather coming now. So quite how much milder than average this November ends up as at the end of month will be interesting uh, to see. Uh, so let's take you through to December and uh, that one is forecast to be mild on average through much of the UK, through much of uh, Europe as well, quite a mild month in December. Uh, let's take you through to January and uh, still mild on average actually for much of Northern Europe, Scandinavia down to the UK and Ireland still above average with temperatures not as above average elsewhere. So cooling down in January, but still fairly mild, actually, particularly for Northern Europe. That's February. It looks colder. Um, so the milder than average temperature has been pushed off into the very, very far northeast of Scandinavia and west of Russia. UK and Ireland and Northern France actually going a little bit cooler than average in February, a little bit below average 
Um, March, close to average temperature anomalies in March, not a strong signal. April, again, close to average. It's turning milder both for northern parts of Europe and into May. Generally quite mild across most parts of the country uh, in May. And then I'll flip you through to precipitation anomalies. This is how they break down uh, month by month. So, again, this is how things are looking in November. Very dry signals you'll see for much of Europe. Those uh, sort of sandy brown colours indicating substantially drier than average precipitation uh, anomalies in November. You expect December to be wetter. Let's confirm that. So, yes, it looks like quite a wet month for the UK, for Ireland, for much of France as well. And all actual parts of Europe look a good deal more unsettled in December compared to that very dry uh, November. January turns milder, uh, mild, um, drier again, and that's as the high pressure builds up uh, across much of Northern Europe. So go back to drier conditions, very quiet conditions probably in uh, January. February looks like that drier than average to the north and west. So that's where the high pressure is uh, going to be. Obviously high pressure out here, high pressure up here, low pressure through here where it's wettest. And that's the reason we come out potentially with a cold month in February. March uh, looks very similar. So, again, we've got all of the high pressure out to west. It's a little bit further south, but drier than average conditions out to west, northwest of the UK. Wetter than average in central parts of Europe. So, could be a pair of cold months. Very similar to last year, actually, or to this year, I suppose I should say, 2018. But when we get to February, March, it will be sort of last year. But anyway, very similar for two years, February and March 2018. Uh, looking quite similar to February, March 2019 based on the uh, ECMDF forecast. That's April, again, um, quite a bit dry of an average to the north of the UK, suggesting a blocking signal continues into April. Then very dry through most parts of Europe, away from the east of the southeast anyway, very dry into May. May looks a very pleasant month, but of course it's six months away, it's far, far too far away to have any sort of conviction in that. I just want to change the view very quickly. So this one is always helpful to have a look at. And let's go back to mean sea level pressure. Noise. Remember, you can see all of these charts for yourself at weather.us. Uh, and you find the link to weather.us on the links page. And I'll leave it in the description at YouTube as well. So again, this is the um, mean sea level pressure anomaly for uh, December. And again, this is um, looking at the much wider view, the sort of North American, South American and Atlantic view. It's always useful to have a look at this because you can see what's happening in the Atlantic Ocean. And it just confirms that December is expected to be a very unsettled month, a mild, wet, unsettled end to 2018. January looks like that again, just confirming that we've got that high pressure in over the UK and much of Northern Europe. There's a high pressure city there with low pressure up to our north up here. So the jet stream is going to be up there. And so that's the reason, despite the high pressure, it's not a particularly cold month, although you will get frost and fog uh, with that. Let's have a look at February. February should be quite interesting. So, again, you see that the centre of the high pressure in February is kind of like around Iceland, but it does stretch up towards Greenland. February is definitely the best shot at getting a, a cold month of this winter based on this latest update from the ECM. WF again, the wind coming in from that sort of direction, and we do see signs of a suddenly tracking jet stream in February. March is looking like this. Still quite a blocking signal in March. These two months are forecast. I think they're forecast to be appreciably cold with high pressure likely to be around here, low pressure still underneath it. You would still think we're opening the door to those east or feasty winds. They could be two a pair of cold months, February and March, very much like what happened in February, March 2018. Things change as we go through to April. Low pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, high pressure is up there. Bit of a battle, but I think actually it probably is a low pressure in the Atlantic that's holding sway here and bringing milder air in from off the Atlantic Ocean. The ridge is quite weak to the north. And then that 
that uh, takes us through to May, and May looking really uh, a nice month with high pressure up here. Low pressure is stalled out in the middle of the Atlantic, so potentially bringing up some very warm air from the south, lots of warm, dry conditions in May, but that's too far away to um, be particularly interested in. Right, so going back to winter, we can say that Metro France is going for a cold winter. It was confirmed by the temperature anomaly, but the main thing is the mean sea level pressure anomaly. It's going for a lot of blocking to our north, and so Metro France, quite straightforwardly, is going for a cold of an average winter pattern. Uh, East Shepherd Earth is more complicated. It gets cold late. The early part of winter now with the East Shepherd Earth looks relatively mild and wet through December. Then January builds up high pressure. And then probably from a sudden stratospheric warm event, we get that high pressure out to the north us, and we go off and running into what could be quite a cold pair of months in February and March. Um, so you pay your money, you take your choice. East Shepherd is definitely backed away from... It's cold block signal that it had a month or two ago, and it's going for very extensive normal blocking, especially in January. But uh, Metro France has actually upgraded its cold signal. So, a bit of a confusing update, actually. But between the two of them, I suppose you can say there is likely to be, at least at times this winter, some appreciably cold weather. Whether it happens late, as in the ECMDF, or whether it happens pretty much evenly distributed through the winter, as in Metro France, there is likely to be cold weather and snow at some point, maybe quite significantly through this winter, not just for the UK, but for much of Northern Europe. Right, that's it for this month. Do it all over again uh, next month. And of course, that will take us further into uh, 2019. Um, don't forget to check out the 12th and penultimate winter 2018-19 updates on my home page at the moment. That video will be placed on winter updates page later today or possibly tomorrow if I run out of time. Got a Christmas update coming up very shortly and of course uh, we're going to have a live chat with Quantum talking about the cold weather and maybe even the risk of snow in the next few days. So lots going on the website. Do keep checking back for more uh, and that's all for now but uh, that's all now and thanks for watching.